Thank you, Wendy. It's good advice when I'm standing up here in front of you to remember you don't have to be afraid. Please join me in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for exposing us to love. Thank you for enriching our lives with your presence. Thank you that you never leave us or forsake us. Please send the special anointing of your spirit to our hearts and minds that we may hear from you and receive revelation knowledge to your glory and to our life. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. The scripture reading, the second reading, is Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 through 21. And I noticed that 11 begins with the word, therefore. Uh, I was taught years ago in incorrect English that when a scripture begins with therefore, one should find out what it's there for. <laughs> so I believe I've done that, and we're going to include verse 10 to find out what it's there for. Attend to the Word of God. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God. And I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Well, the title of the sermon is That Kind of Angel. I decided to look up the word angel in the dictionary online, and I found interesting information about its origin. Angel is Middle English you might not have known that you could speak Middle English. It comes from Old English, Engel, and from Anglo-French, Anglia. Both are from Latin, Anglius, and from Greek, Anglios. It literally means messenger. 
There's, uh, there was a movie a few years ago uh, starring John Travolta. The name of the movie was Michael. John Travolta played a rather imposing angel in that movie and I think did a convincing job. Michael was a very special angel. Michael smoked cigarettes, by the way, and had some criticism about that. And Travolta's character, Michael, said this, I'm not that kind of angel. He gave the same answer to the criticism of the adult beverages that he enjoyed. I'm not that kind of angel. Paul, the messenger of God, was an angel. But what kind of angel? Paul said that he was an angel or a messenger of God sent from God as an ambassador bearing a word from God, be reconciled to God. Some people thought that Paul's behavior and language were absurd. Maybe he wasn't mentally right. His answer was this. If I am beside myself, it is for God. And if I'm in my right mind, it is for you. Some people in this day and age thinking of a person like Paul would say that this individual is sold out for God, sold out for Christ and for Christ's church. All in is another way of putting it. Paul's motivation, according to Paul, was the love of Christ. The love of Christ in his heart motivated him in love for others. Another way of using the love for Christ is Christ kind of love. I believe this is the heart of Paul's movement to share the good news of the gospel with the world. is because his Lord and Savior Jesus had died on the cross on his behalf, had borne his sin and the guilt of sin, had taken away the fear of ultimate death and replaced it with hope of the resurrection. Jesus on the cross became acquainted with sin and the result of sin. He bore on the cross the curse of sin, which is death, separation from God, or to put it another way, the loss of right relationship with God. And so Jesus on the cross in one of his last words says this heartbreaking line, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus entered the result of human sin, which is a broken relationship with God, bringing God's self into that place we call death. For a Christian, the fear of death is removed, and if uh, you still have some fear about it, don't be afraid. I don't like the process at all, and I'm a little concerned about that. But the end result of the end of this life for persons of faith is a knowing that God's already there. God is here with us, and God is here beyond this time and space of us. For the love of Christ, then, Paul was moved to share the good news. Because we are convinced that one has died for all, Paul writes, therefore, all have died. It might be more logical to say, since one has died for all, therefore all can live. But that's not what Paul wrote. In him, we have died to sin and are made alive to God. The death is to the person we have been and the motivations of that life and the life we have now is a new one in Christ.
He died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. The Christians then could be seen as the living dead. No, not the living dead, that's zombies. We're the anti-zombies. We're the dead living. We have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless we live. Galatians 2.20, Paul wrote that. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We're still here, but God is our glory and the lifter of our heads. Did you see the zombies in some of the parades? I, I did. I've, I've been in a few parades, and it's very tiring to walk miles and miles, and it's especially tiring when something causes the parade to stop. And I understand toasting and that sort of thing, but it's very tiring to just stand there. But imagine how tiring it is to be a zombie in a parade, and to just got to limp along like this for miles and miles. We're the anti-zombies. We have died, yet live in Christ Jesus. Molly and I went a few days ago and had lunch with a group of anti-zombies. <laughs> you may have been there. It's a place called Cafe Reconcile. It's great. The whole staff, anti-zombies. It's on Aretha Castle Haley Boulevard in Central City. This restaurant was founded by Father Harry Thompson, Jesuit priest, uh, who was the principal of Jesuit High School for a number of years. It was founded in 1996. He had help from a number of folk in the community, especially some wonderful gifts from Craig Sessia and Tim Falcon. According to their literature, this is what's done at Cafe Reconcile. It's a work to resolve the deeply ingrained social ills of poverty, prejudice, and fear by engaging disconnected youth ages 16 through 22 and providing them with the tools to make positive changes in their lives. Reconciliation. This is what God does for us in Christ. We disconnected people. And he calls us to his presence and gives us the tools necessary that we could have a productive and positive life beyond the fear of impoverishment. Maybe it's not monetary. Maybe it's impoverishment uh, as the children's sermon talking about the feeling of being alone. Or prejudice. Sometimes we're afraid that we don't measure up in someone else's sight. The good news is in God's sight, God sees you as God's children and loves you to death and to life. Well, Cafe Reconcile is a really good place. The food was good. The atmosphere was pleasant. The uh, waiter, uh, by the way, you could ask for Joe and you could have our waiter. He did an excellent job. It's a place of change and new beginnings. In reconciliation and a call to reconciliation, who moves? Who has to move? Be ye reconciled to God. Years ago, I learned that God is not the one who changes, that God is constant in God's love and in God's being. 
We're the ones, it's called sin. We're the ones who have rebelled and moved away. We're the ones who have initiated the break in the relationship. And we're the ones who have to move to return. We are called to be reconciled to God. In that call is the good news that Jesus has borne our sins and taken them away. That when we come to God, we come not as one who is unable to face up to the good presence of God, but as one who, as a child, is asked to come into the presence of a loving parent, or, in my case, grandparent. What an amazing thing to be reconciled to God, to be made right with God. It's already been done. God's the initiator and the doer of this reconciliation. We just hear and return. I'm saying it that way because although I'm a Christian and have been for years and decades, I'm still a sinner. And there are times, more often than I want to say, where I realize again, oh, that wasn't right. It's embarrassing sometimes to be a sinner. And then to hear again in my heart the call, be reconciled to God. In the name of Jesus, you and I are forgiven. There's a, another group of anti-zombies that uh, I'm enjoying being a part of. It's called St. Charles Avenue Presbyterian Church. We are persons who carry the good news with us in our actions and in our words. As a church, we have everything necessary to be the body of Christ and present the love of God to our community and to the world. We have various gifts. We do things in different ways. But together, we are an ambassador for God, God making his appeal to the world through us, be ye reconciled to God. We're called to be that kind of angel. Amen.